Welcome to the Southwark Library Summertime Kids Club. Each week you'll get a new bag, a blue bag, with activities, a book, and a puzzle or a contest for a chance to win a prize. We'll include a science moment with Julia and a craft with Erin. We'll have videos available for you to watch their demonstrations of the science and the craft and the stories. This week we're looking at folk tales. A folk tale is a story that often is passed down through generations. It may have talking animals and it involves a problem that has to be solved and a lesson. The three little pigs had a problem. They needed to build a wolf proof house. The first one built his house out of, do you remember? Yeah, straw. And the wolf blew it down. The second one built his house out of sticks. And the wolf blew that one down too. The third one finally built a wolf proof house made out of bricks and boiled the wolf. And we are also gonna look at the wolf side of the story. I am going to show you how to make your own wolf and little pig out of the supplies in your bag. We're also going to take a look at the construction issues that the three little pigs face. And you're gonna build your own wolf proof house out of straw and paper. And you're gonna see if your wolf can blow it down. Then try it with the Legos in your summer reading bag. And while we're looking at house building, we're gonna see how strong a single piece of paper is with our under pressure challenge. We're also gonna read the story of Jack and the Beanstalk and you can plant your own mystery seeds and see what grows. I'll also explain how seeds germinate and grow. Use the journal you got in your summer reading kit to draw some pictures from your favorite folktale, or maybe you wanna write a folktale all of your own. Remember to color in a section of your castle for every activity you do and every 30 minutes that you read or listen to stories or anything else. Our contest this week is to match the words to the folk tale that they came from. Hmm, how many do you know? Turn in your completed sheet to the library in our book drop and we'll award prizes each week. Thanks and I hope you have a great time this week reading and engaging in folk tales and every other kind of tales and stories and we'll see you next week. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs Everyone knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story, because no one has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind would build a house of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed 
and I snuffed, and I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down, and right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a door now. Wolf's honor. Now you know, food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better, and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again, then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like that, I go crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. So that's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. There was once upon a time a poor widow who had an only son named Jack and a cow named Milky White. All they had to live on was the milk the cow gave, which they carried to the market and sold. But one morning Milky White gave no milk. What shall we do? What shall we do? said Jack's mother, wringing her hands. Oh, cheer up, mother, said Jack. It's market day today, and I'll soon sell Milky White, and then we'll see what we can do. So he took the cow's halter in his hand, and off he started. Jack hadn't gone far when he met a funny-looking old man who said, Good morning, and where are you off to? I'm going to market to sell our cow. Oh, said the man, I don't mind doing a swap with you. Your cow for these beans. If you plant them overnight, by morning they will grow right up to the sky. Really, said Jack amazed, and he handed over Milky White. When Jack arrived home, his mother asked, Back already, Jack? How much did you get from Milky White? What do you say to these beans, Jack told her. Plant them overnight and... What, cried Jack's mother, have you been so foolish? And she threw the beans out the window and sent Jack to bed without any supper. The next morning when Jack woke up, the room looked funny. 
The sun was shining into part of it, but the rest was dark and shady. He jumped up and went to the window, and what do you think he saw? Why, the beans had sprung up into a big beanstalk, which went up and up and up like a ladder until it reached the sky. Jack jumped onto the beanstalk and up he climbed until he reached the clouds and found a road stretching into the distance. He walked along it until he came to a great big tall house and on the doorsteps of the house was a great big tall woman. Good morning, said Jack. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? For Jack had left home without anything to eat. If it's breakfast you want, it's breakfast you'll be, said the great tall woman. My man is a giant, and there's nothing he likes better than boys broiled on toast. Oh, please give me something to eat, begged Jack. So the giant's wife, who was not half so bad, took Jack into the kitchen and gave him some bread and milk. But Jack had just started to eat when there was a thump, 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 and the whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming. Goodness gracious me, it's him, said the giant's wife. What on earth shall I do? Come along quick and jump in here. And she bundled Jack into the oven just as the giant came in. He was a big one, to be sure. Oh, what's this I smell, he boomed. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he live or be he dead, I'll have his bones to grind my bread. Oh, nonsense, dear, said the woman. You smell the scraps of the little boy you liked so much for yesterday's dinner. You go and have a wash, and by the time you come back, your breakfast will be ready for you. While the giant was off washing, Jack was about to jump out of the oven and run away when the woman whispered to him, Shh, wait until he's asleep. He always has a doze after breakfast. Well, the giant came back and ate, and when he had finished, he went to a big chest and he took out a couple of bags of gold and he sat at the table and counted the gold until his head began to nod and he began to snore and the whole house began to shake. Then Jack crept out on tiptoe from the oven and as he was passing the giant, why he took one of the bags of gold and off he ran with it under his arm. When he reached the beanstalk, he threw the bag down into his mother's garden and climbed down after it. Jack showed his mother the gold and said, Well, mother, wasn't I right about the beans? They are really magical, you see. So they lived on the bag of gold for some time, but at last they came to the end of it, and Jack made up his mind to try his luck once more. So one fine day he got up early and he jumped onto the beanstalk and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed until he came to the road again. And he went along to see the great big tall house where the woman and the giant lived. And there sure enough was the great big tall woman standing on the doorstep. Good morning, said Jack. Could you be so good as to give me something to eat? Huh. Aren't you the boy who came here once before? Do you know that my husband missed one of his bags of gold that very day? That's strange, said Jack. I dare say I could tell you something about that, but I'm so hungry. I can't speak till I've had something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was so curious that she took Jack in and gave him something to eat. But Jack had scarcely begun munching when... Thump, 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 they heard the giant's footsteps. Away went Jack into the oven to hide. All happened as it did before. In came the giant saying, Fee, fi, fo, fum. And then he demanded his breakfast, and after he had eaten, he said, Wife, bring me the hen that lays golden eggs. So she brought it, and the giant said, Lay. And the hen laid an egg of gold. And then the giant began to nod his head and to snore until the house shook. Jack crept out of the oven on tiptoe and caught hold of the hen and was off. But just as he was going out the door, the hen gave a cackle, which woke the giant. 
Jack heard him calling, Wife, wife, what have you done with my golden hen? But that was all Jack heard, for he rushed off to the beanstalk, climbed down it, and showed his mother the wonderful hen. Lay, he said, and the hen laid a golden egg. But after, after some time, even though the hen laid a golden egg, every time Jack said, Lay, Jack was not content. So one fine morning, he got up early, jumped onto the beanstalk, and climbed to the top for the third time. But he knew better than to go straight to the giant's house and speak to the great big tall woman. So he waited behind a bush till he saw the giant's wife come out with a pail to get some water. Then he crept into the house and he got into a copper box on the table. He hadn't been there long when he heard thump, 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 and in came the giant and his wife. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, cried out the giant. I smell him, wife, I smell him. Do you, dearie, said the wife. Then if it's the little boy who stole your gold and your golden hen, he's sure to be hiding in the oven. But Jack wasn't there, of course, and the giant's wife said, There you go again with your fee fi fo fum Why, of course, it's the boy you caught last night that I just broiled for your breakfast. So the giant sat down to eat, but every now and then he would mutter, Well, I could have sworn. And up he'd get and search everywhere, except in the copper box right under his nose. After breakfast, the giant called out, Wife, wife, bring me my golden harp. And after she had put it on the table in front of him, the giant said, Sing. And the golden harp sang most beautifully, and it went on singing until the giant fell asleep and snored like thunder. <sniffs> then Jack lifted up the lid of the copper box and quietly crept on his hands and knees and caught hold of the golden harp. Dashed with it toward the door, the harp called out loudly, Master! Master! And the giant woke up just in time to see Jack running off with his harp. Jack ran as fast as he could with the giant rushing after him. The giant was not more than 20 yards away when suddenly he saw Jack disappear. He looked down through the clouds and he saw Jack climbing down the beanstalk. Well, the giant didn't like trusting himself to such a ladder and he stood and watched until the harp called out, Master, Master! And with that, the giant swung himself onto the beanstalk and started down after Jack. The beanstalk swayed and creaked under his great weight. By this time, Jack had nearly reached the ground. Mother, mother, he called out, bring me an axe, bring me an axe. His mother came rushing out with the axe in her hands. But when she came to the beanstalk, she stood still with fright. For there she saw the giant with his legs coming down the beanstalk through the clouds. Jack grabbed the axe and gave it a chop, which cut the beanstalk in half. The giant felt the, felt the beanstalk shake and quiver, and he looked down to see what was the matter. And then Jack gave another chop, and the beanstalk was cut in two. The giant came tumbling down, and the beanstalk came toppling after him. Well, that was the end of the giant. And with the hen that laid golden eggs and a harp that sang, Jack and his mother had no more worries, and they lived happily ever after.